Today we're going to introduce you to the onboard effects processor on the TouchMix and show you how to use the effects wizard to add effects to your performance. Audio effects such as reverb, chorus, delay, pitch correction, and pitch change are essential in today's audio production. The touch mix may just give you more effects processing than you've ever had before, but using effects can be intimidating. So stick with us, because the payoff is a professional sounding live performance. First, let's look at the architecture of the effects section. Imagine this. Whoa! Inside touch mix is a virtual equipment warehouse. In the warehouse, there are 24 effects processors, four chorus processors, four pitch change processors, four dense reverb processors, four lush reverb processors, four mono delay processors, and four stereo delay processors. You can choose to use any four of these processors in any combination to use at any one time. Each of these processors has multiple presets. The reverb processors, for example, will have presets simulating various sizes of rooms and halls, as well as reverb plates. There may also be brighter or darker sounding variations and presets with longer or shorter reverb times. We can send the signal from any of the inputs to any effects processors. Once the processor has done its job by adding the wet sound, that's what we call the sound that's been processed through the effect, it can be blended back with the dry, unaffected sound from the inputs and sends on to the mixer's outputs. Now that we have a feel for how the effects works, let's talk about what you're going to use them for. Let's say that you have a large band with a sax player, uh, some vocalist, and a fully mic'd drum kit. In this example, we're going to use the factory default presets. Now, don't be afraid to use these. We designed them to be useful in a lot of different situations. Now, in this hypothetical band, the lead vocalist will be sent to a 250 millisecond delay that will be mixed in at a low level to provide a bit of thickening. The water clock ticks a rhythm and a song. Horns and all the vocals will be given a bit of space in a medium hall reverb. The snare and toms are all going to have a medium plate reverb applied to them. Plate reverb is a go-to effect for drums in a live sound environment. Note that you can send a channel to more than one effect. Our sax is also being sent to a pitch shift effect with a light detune preset. This will provide a subtle doubling. Other instruments don't need effects, or they have their own effects, like guitar pedals or internal effects on a keyboard. So we're going to leave those dry. So now you understand the touch mix effects, and you thought about what to do with the effects. Well, let's talk about the how. There are several ways to select and set up the effects on the touch mix. Today, we're going to focus on the fastest and easiest method, which is the effects wizard. Now, much like the channel presets or pretty much anything else you find on the touch mix, the effects wizard is designed to help you get the most out of your live performance. So let's say that you need to add some reverb to a tom drum, but you don't know which one is the best for your scenario. Well, the wizard helps you out with that. Let me show you what we mean. Start by pressing Wizard, then Effects Wizard. Pause. The software screens you're about to see were filmed on a previous version of the firmware. If you're using version 3.0 or higher, then the graphics you'll see on your screen will look a little newer. You'll see more options and more features than the software that you see in this video. Don't worry. The process we're going to show you is exactly the same, even if some of the buttons don't end up being in the exact same place on the screen. All right, let's go. If this is your first time using the FX Wizard, the mixer will default to FX Processor 1. Select a preset by using the Source, Type, and FX Style windows to choose an effect. You'll notice that not all the reverb types in the touch mix are available for selection, just the ones that are most relevant and appropriate for the selected source. So just like the previous example where we selected a plate reverb for the toms, You'll see that plate reverb is available for use here, while hall reverb, an effect that might muddy up the drums in a mix, is not. Pretty smart, right? Use the master encoder to scroll up and down the list, or drag on screen to see all the selections. Touch recall once you've made a choice, and confirm. The preset name will be displayed below the type window. The preset has now been loaded, and now it's time to send audio to effects one. On your mixer, just decide which channels you want the effect to apply to and touch the corresponding button under Select Inputs to Feed. 
the selected channels are now feeding the effects processor. The moment you've selected an input, it is automatically sent to the effects processor and returned again, all at a nominal level. You don't have to adjust anything else. Now, is your performer going to want to hear effects in his stage monitor? Well, if so, that's easy to do. Just select the buttons under Select Aux Outputs to tell your mixer where the effect should go. If you find that you'd like to change the level of the effect, you can use the Master Effects Fader here. You've still got three effects available, so touch one of the tabs on the top of the screen to set up another effect. And that's it. You've set up all your effects. And here's one more tip. The Touch Mix has an FX Mute button. You can use it to mute all the effects at the same time. This is really useful if the singer is talking between songs and you don't want to hear the reverb and delay on his speech. We're going to use it right now to demonstrate the difference that effects have on a mix. That's the way of a night sky. We're living in the world, the world well, That's it for this installment. If you want to dive even further into effects, check out our next installment, Advanced Effects. We'll see you then.